Today we are going to do a deep dive for a roadmap of a data scientist. Should I learn data science is another question that people keep asking me. You're not going to lose your job to an AI, but you are going to lose it to somebody who uses AI. The first thing you will need to learn is obviously Python for data science. So you need to learn how to create proper dashboards, how to tell a story with data. Yes, Python also has oops and it is used a lot in modern day programming. You should learn about exploratory data analysis. We come to Gen AI. Well, this is going to be a big one. Three common most are Plotly Dash, Power BI and Tableau. Good day everyone and hello to all. Today we are going to do a deep dive for a roadmap of a data scientist. Well. The first question a lot of students have asked me is what is data science? In simple words, data science is literally just the art and science of converting human intuition into algorithm and code. Should I learn data science is another question that people keep asking me. They are thinking that everything is going to be done by AI. So why should I learn data science? Well. I, I like this quote from the CEO of NVIDIA uh, and I like this a lot so I'm going to present it today. You're not going to lose your job to an AI but you're going to lose it to somebody who uses AI. So we need to become that somebody. We need to become that somebody who uses AI and not lose our job to somebody who uses AI. Finally, let's start our roadmap. Let's have a high level look at what are the things that you might need to learn and then we'll deep dive into each of them. The first thing you will need to learn is obviously Python for data science. The second thing is data analytics and business intelligence. The third thing is going to be vibe coding and AI pair programming. Everybody needs to learn about vibe coding and AI programming, no matter if they are a data scientist, front end developer, a DevOps engineer or whatever IT role they are playing. Then you have to learn something called storytelling with data. Why? Because you will have to create some dashboards that allow us business users to make decisions. But if you are making ineffective dashboards, that's not worth their time. So you need to learn how to create proper dashboards, how to tell a story with data. Obviously, you will also have to learn maths for data science. And then finally, you can start learning machine learning, deep learning, Gen AI and agentic AI as well as ML Ops and LLM Ops. Okay. To learn Python, the first thing that you will need to learn is basics, data structures and conditional statements. The second thing would be loops, list and uh, co list comprehensions, error handling and virtual environments. Then you need to learn functions, lambda functions, random, uh, random numbers, file handling. Then you need to learn about something called classes and inheritance. Oops, basically. Yes, Python also has oops and it is used a lot in modern day programming. You will also need to learn about multi-threading so that your uh, code becomes fast. Then you will have to learn about how to work with APIs, databases in Python how to accept an API output, how to request for a database query. Okay, Then you should also learn, although this might seem optional to a lot of folks, but you should also learn what is what are some testing frameworks in Python and what is the Pythonic style of coding. You need to learn that so that you are able to write professional industry level code. After you have done all of this, you should be building a resume worthy project. Next, you should learn about data analytics and business intelligence. Well, you should first learn about why most data analysts prototype their dashboards, their charts, their visuals, their data explorations in Excel. You should learn about the power of Excel. If you don't have Excel, you can use Google Sheets, which, is, which comes free with a Gmail account. Then you should learn about SQL commands then you should learn about Postgres, not just MySQL, Postgres as well, which is much more common in the modern era. Then you should learn about NoSQL and MongoDB, again, more common than Postgres in the modern era. Most databases nowadays are NoSQL databases rather than just SQL databases. Then 
you should learn about exploratory data analysis how you need to perform eda in any data set there is a guiding strategy that you should follow then you should have an eda project this is something that you should put in your portfolio then finally after you have done your eda you have you know how to access a database you know how to query a database you should finally start looking into dashboarding the first thing that you need to learn around dashboarding is the first principles of dashboarding for dashboarding there are many tools what will happen is that you will not get to choose which tool you have access to so you will have to learn all kinds of tools but the most three common most are plotly dash power bi and tableau tableau you can do a deep dive because it is much more common than the other two finally you should spend at least a few weeks in your dashboarding project you should build a really impressive dashboard and add it to your portfolio then you should learn about vibe coding and ai pair programming almost immediately now many students have asked me what is the difference between vibe coding and what is the difference between ai pair programming how is it different from vibe coding well vibe coding is basically you are the copilot and the ai is the pilot in ai pair programming you are pilot and the ai is the copilot you are instructing the ai how to do some things that you want done okay obviously you will have to set up vibe coding basics okay what are the basic principles then you will have to learn some tools that allow us to do vibe coding and ai pair programming then you will have to learn about principles of agentic code design you will have to learn about checkpoints so that your work is not lost then you will learn about ai uh, ai vibe coding tools okay then you need to spend at least some time learning about the pros and precautions of vibe coding why not all solutions require vibe coding why some solutions require human intervention finally you will set up an agentic workflow whether that be via github copilot or using something called as cursor now the advantage of having this setup all in the this early in the roadmap is that you can do multiple small small projects and add it to your resume okay then we will be talking about storytelling with data you need to understand how to choose an effective visual you need to understand about things such as clutter what is cognitive load and what is the audience focus then you need to understand what is the art and science of storytelling a lot of us understand think that we have this art already but it is really really hard to learn it took me years to learn it then you will need to look at a few case studies these are readily available on the internet along with gfg then you remember we created a dashboard well you will spend some time to improve your dashboard according to the concept that you have learnt around storytelling with data finally you will end up with an industry grade dashboard for maths finally we are coming to the machine learning part of data science so you will first have to learn about maths well in maths you will have to learn about basic statistics mean median mode measures of uh, spread and central tendency then you will need to learn about linear algebra how matrices follow linear algebra then you will need to learn about probability how you can use probability in machine learning functions machine learning algorithms then you will need to learn a bit of a differential calculus maybe a week to understand what is calculus especially around what is differentiation and that's pretty much it that's pretty much it and then then we finally come to machine learning well first week you just understand what is machine learning what are the kinds of machine learning what are things that you need to be cautious about when we are learning machine learning then you need to understand what is feature engineering and data transformations 
then you learn about regression models such as linear regression and any regressor based models then clustering models such as k means and db scan then classification models and a special focus on decision trees and forest including xgboost okay then you start adding domain to your machine learning knowledge you will need to add something called as N, uh, you will need to learn something called as nlp for machine learning which is natural language process for machine learning then you talk about anomaly detection using machine learning models then finally we have time series forecasting then we learn about model tuning and optimization what are hyperparameters how can we optimize hyperparameters what are evaluation metrics and how do we uh, understand what which model performs better finally you will need to learn about the challenges of machine learning and how to overcome them what is overfitting what is underfitting what is uh, how to handle imbalanced data things like that then you will enter the world of deep learning now to understand deep learning you need to understand the historical context of deep learning how we ended up with our current architectures what is a neuron what is a perceptron what existed before perceptron why there were things like ai winters ai springs you need to understand those so that you have a good solid foundation then you need to understand about the basic neural network architecture what is a neuron again what is a multilayered perceptron how is it different from a valina neural network and then you need to understand whilst you are understanding all of this you will also need to understand the learning process the training of neural networks how are the weights optimized okay then you will finally talk about then you can finally look at what are the training challenges and how can you improve the performance of any model you will i i highly recommend that you implement a neural network including training from scratch in python but that i believe is an optional step you will then learn about pytorch this is the modern language of neural networks earlier it used to be something called as keras but i would highly discourage people from learning keras because it is no longer being used okay then we learn about convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks where are they used why are they different from anns what was the need for these models then we finally learn about transfer learning how does transfer learning work and then you can learn about significant models that are very very different from basic neural network architectures and have proved performance in the past okay finally we come to gen ai well this is going to be a big one first you need to understand very thoroughly transformers then you need to learn about hugging face and how hugging face eases something called as transfer learning we learned about transfer learning in the previous section as well but the transfer learning that we refer to in the earlier section was around pytorch in this we are going to learn about something called transfer learning via hugging face okay then we start with gen ai glossary and prompt engineering then we need to understand what are embeddings what are vector databases finally we can enter the world of langchain what is rag and how to implement a chatbot okay then we have something called as local llms why those are better why those are secure you need to understand that okay then we learn about multimodal gen ai okay and we learn about some what is multimodal gen ai well large language models are only around text whereas multimodal gen ai takes in multiple kinds of inputs including images video and audio we learn about guardrails and evaluation of llms which is becoming a field of its own and then we learn about agentic frameworks and agent uh, agent tasks and tools okay but this is not done where are our projects well in the next section we'll talk about what 
आर द थ्री प्रोजेक्ट दैट यू नीड टू डू टू इंश्योर दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड जेनी आई The first project is going to be a simple prompt engineering project that you will have to do. The second project that you will have to do is going to be a rag based project. The third project that you are going to have to do is an agentic AI project. And that's it. You have learned Jenny AI. Now, how do you deploy these models? Well, that is where ML Ops and LLM Ops comes into play. To learn how to deploy these models, you will have to first learn what is shell, what is Git, what does large file storage mean and what is data version controlling okay then you have to learn about apis how to create an a create an api in python and uh, you are you will have to learn about flask and fast api fast is the modern version of creating apis i highly discourage folks from learning flask nowadays it's an outdated method then you will have to learn about docker and not just learn master it expert become an expert in docker as well you will have to give multiple weeks to docker then you will have to learn about kubernetes and ml flow which is where how you track a machine learning model is explained then any other ml ops tools such as grafana prometheus things like that finally you have our llm cycle Uh, life cycle and prompt management tools such as opic and uh, others any lnm observability tools langsmith agent ops things like that then finally evaluation how do you evaluate lnm at scale this is where what you need to learn okay that's that's a lot i know and if you think that this is too much please be patient we are releasing courses around those if you have any question please let me know i'll answer them in the comments below